So in the first kit, there are over 150 different pictures and successful approximation of the targets for reinforcing food items, toys, activities. And what we try to do is pack as much information into each card as we can. So you see it's got a brightly colored photograph on the front, and then on the back, we have a sign language uh, model producing the sign, a description of the sign, and then the success of approximation to the target, and some additional notes for you if you're not a speech pathologist. So the first application of the card would be as a sign language dictionary. So here we see the sign language model signing cookie or grapes. That might be a pretty easy sign to find in a sign language dictionary. But when you start looking for a sign for Cheetos or fruit snack, you're going to be less likely to find that. So I worked with an instructor in the deaf community and she either showed me the signs that the deaf community were using or we invented signs for additional items like Cheetos or fruit snacks or marshmallows or some other of the items like Fritos that you are less likely to find in a sign language dictionary. So application one would be a sign language dictionary. You don't show this sign to the, the signs here to the child, rather you use that to teach yourself the sign and then in the manual that comes with the kit and also in my webinars through Northern, I give very clear uh, instructions about how you might be able to teach someone to sign using physical prompts and fading them, using model prompts and fading them so that kids are independently signing in the presence of the item when they want it. So first application, sign language dictionary, teaching kids to request using sign language. Second application, shaping their articulation so they're producing clearer words. So for example, in the word for cookie, we have ui, tutu, tui, tuti, kui, kiki, cookie. So here, um, you could skillfully guide the child to a better form of the word. And if you're a speech language pathologist, you might recognize they might not need all those approximations. Or if you are a behavior analyst or a teacher, you could look at the bottom and I would give you some additional hints about which ones you might be able to eliminate for your learner so that you're working as efficiently as possible to build their uh, approximation to shape their vocalization to a better form of the word cookie. So sign language dictionary, shaping their vocal approximation, and once they have that improved articulation, you can transfer that to requesting and also now teach them to label the picture um, using that uh, best approximation, their best form of the word. So now you can use it for labeling as well and then receptive identification too. Um, and for your kids who are even moving to more advanced concepts, you can use the cards to teach them to receptively identify or to label when told a feature, a function, a class. And we've got some great functions in here, things you eat, things you drink, things you play with, and some great categories as well. So you could divide them into breakfast foods, candy, desserts, lunch and dinner items, drinks, snacks, fruits, common objects, electronics, school supplies, toys, utensils, so that you might have um, children that are able to identify some things you eat, some things you drink, or to tell you some toys that they like to play with. And in the toys, we've included many common toys, but also things like Legos, balloons, uh, pin toys, fans, uh, spinning toys, koosh, pop tubes. So other toys that you might not be able to easily find a sign for or find a picture of, but that are commonly played with by children with autism spectrum disorders or other kids that have motivational issues. Let's talk now about the K and K sign to talk verbs kit. When Nancy and I produced the action or the nouns kit, we got a lot of uh, good feedback from families, people emailing, thanking us for the kits. And I had one parent in particular who emailed and said that her child prior to this was really not that interested in shaping a speech production, but when they shifted to teaching him the names of the reinforcing items and used the successive approximations with these bright colored photos, that he started calling them the cool cards. And she said, Tammy, my son, like other children with autism, is a mover and a shaker. He likes to jump, he likes to run, he likes to be tickled, he likes to be squeezed. Could you come up with an actions kit? And so that's exactly what we did. Similar to the nouns kit, we have over 40 actions, and for the actions, we have two examples each. So for example, for blowing, we have one boy blowing out candles, and then two boys blowing bubbles. So we have that bright colored picture on the front, and then on the back of the card, 
you'll see that we have the sign language model producing the sign with that verbal description of the sign and then the successive approximations to the target again. O, bo, bowo, below, blow. So again, using it as a sign language dictionary, teaching the child to request with sign, shaping his vocalization, and then transferring that improved vocalization to requesting and also to labeling. And then once your child's able to tell you blowing for the two different examples, you can also move it to more advanced um, language. What I tried to do in this kit to pack it as, with as much information as possible is to equally balance it for pronouns of he, she, and they. So here we have he is blowing, they are blowing, he is gluing, she is gluing, he is swinging, they are swinging, and of course, they are hugging. Nancy and I have tried to pack as much information as possible into these two treatment kits, and I hope you find them valuable in your important work of teaching children with autism and other developmental disabilities to sign, to produce improved vocalizations, to label, to receptively identify, and to increase their length of utterance.